Year's Eve 2007, I arrived in China. 他是一个拼搏在中国的西班牙人。米格尔是一个非常非常低调的科学家。My Chinese is just 马马虎虎。西方人和中国人的一些思维方式，有的时候还是不一样。那时候我不喜欢开会，但是现在越来越喜欢。说到开会，你看他中文多好。您的女朋友有没有偶尔向您抱怨 ？Yeah, yeah, she's a sweet time. 那您怎么办呢？两半。二零一零年，他成为第一位非华裔的九七三项目首席科学家。Science is incredibly tough。简单来说，就是干细胞。这个我能听懂。你是能听懂啊？<笑>我听不懂。<笑>您的家人能理解您在研究的是什么吗？找出那些细胞当中的坏家伙。This is much more complicated than this。如果哪一天你获得了诺贝尔奖，是属于中国还是属于西班牙？本期演讲者。米格尔·埃斯特班，品味中国敬酒，感悟中国智慧。各位好，这里是由健康饮酒倡导者中国敬酒独家冠名播出的中国省当电视青年公开课开讲了。我是主持人撒贝宁，欢迎各位。现场大家一看就知道，跟往常不一样了，这还挂着耳机。今天我们这位嘉宾其实完全也用不着同声传译，虽然他是一个外籍人士，但是他在中国生活的时间已经很长了，九年的时间，在中国有一个叫国家重点基础项目研究计划，叫九七三，你们都听说过，他是九七三项目当中的第一位外籍的首席科学家。接下来就让我们掌声有请今天的开讲嘉宾，中国科学院。广州生物医药与健康研究院西班牙裔研究员米格尔·埃斯特班。Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Please. 谢谢各位，谢谢各位，请坐，请坐。呃，木易，边边尼多。啊 ，Welcome， yeah， thank you very much。这是非常欢迎的意思， uh, 是吧？差不多了，差，<笑>差差差的很多吗？<笑>还可以，还可以，不错，不错。用西班牙语怎么说？非常欢迎。边边尼多，不需要木易边边尼多，不需要木易。对。西班牙是我第一个去到的中国以外的国家，我带着哪一个真是？呃，多瑞边哈，多瑞边哈，哎，那里看的，一个海边的小城。Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was born near there, not too far。坐火车两个小时。啊，那很近啊。对啊，我是大学三年级，带着北京大学的学生合唱团去参加一个在西班牙举行的世界合唱节，因为西班牙的复调音乐是很有名的。哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒，哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒，哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒。这，我本来以为这样能拉近跟他的距离，结果他还是很冷漠的说 ：“Good, not bad。”据说你 always 穿着 polo shirt， 永远是 T 恤衫。编导说：“穿 T 恤衫真的有点太随意了，就这样临时去买的一件。Yeah, yeah, 你生活中一般不会穿这样的衬衫。No, no, no. Too hot. When do is hot most most of the year. 就冬天的时候你也穿 T 恤。大部分时候也是。冬天在广东。广州就穿个短袖。没,没冬天。<笑>广州去年还下了雪呢。Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very little, very little. <笑>米格尔是一个非常非常低调的科学家，在中国九年的时间，他只接受过一次纸媒的采访。今天是您的电视节目首秀，对，而且来之前，我们节目组曾经跟呃米格尔先生的单位说，说你们能不能派一个同事跟着他一块儿来，因为毕竟他研究的项目太过于专业，我们怕在交流的过程中就没法沟通。结果米格尔先生说不。就让我自己一个人去面对他们吧。说的特别的悲壮
Uh, I think we have many young scientists here, if I say something small, because I say just very little relative to science, I think they can probably translate for you. 是什么使得您觉得现场有很多年轻的科学家呢？他们不是吗？一我的判断不是，他们是一些年轻的开讲乐的忠实观众。但是当中有学科学的吧？学理工科的有没有？来举手，我看一下。在座的有学生命科学的
and that excites you right being with good people that makes you think more about things and second I had more time to think about myself and think about life so my dreams came back and I soon realized that I wanted to be an explorer of life sciences and I think I made the right choice because the 22nd century is going to be the century of space but this is the century of the human body you know I got lucky to be born in this time so that I could do something that is changing the world right now which is life sciences I finished uh, at university I had a dilemma which is I'm a medic now but if you are a medic you cannot do life sciences research in Spain at least in other countries it's a little bit different but in Spain not you can have a very good job you can have a very good life earn good money everyone respects you very much but you cannot do what I liked then I decided to quit medicine and do a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology I decided to go to England I, w I went to London to the lab of uh, Patrick Maxwell and I was having a happy life but one day the British Council called me they said that I had to come to China to give a talk and then I said no I'm too busy I have no interest in going to China why because I didn't know anything about China so I didn't think it was going to be interesting but they said you have to go and then finally I came and I like it I like it very much I like three things and this is absolutely true I like the people I like the culture and then I like the potential I could see a lot of potential and then after four or five days here I went back to England and then I said well maybe maybe we should find a way so that I come to China more often and I do collaborations and they told me no 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 the same people who were telling me oh you need to go to China to give a talk I know they're telling me no you cannot go there to do work that was an indication that maybe I should change place you know if you don't do it now you, you never do it New Year's Eve 2007 I arrived in China and it was the beginning of uh, my new life as you can see my Chinese is just mama hu hu some of the first words that I learned in Chinese is uh, shama because when I was speaking people were saying shu shama shama they, they did not understand anything uh, second I, and I, I learned uh, la wei so because I was hearing the same name and that was not my name I guess well that must be foreign or something <laughs> uh, uh, the third thing that I learned is the da bao and then the fourth word that I learned in Chinese is the word o. Oh. Do you do you know what o oh means in Chinese? O. Oh? This is more complicated. So we had a driver. He used to pick us up in the morning. Every time that he came and picked me up, he was talking to me in Chinese, full speed Chinese. I did not understand a single word. Finally, I got his meaning. He was saying, Miguel. I call you in the morning and if you go you say oh if you don't go you say oh oh it was like that <laughs> so and then uh, progressively I changed the word oh and oh oh for chi bu chi uh, but my beginning was like that the only thing is that actually it was always oh it was always chi going to work I worked very very hard I think I used to work 8 o'clock in the morning until uh, 10 or 10 30 at night every day of the week every day of the weekend every day of those three years we applied for grants we prepared papers I got my 973 as chief investigator I failed with others I got others I got some good papers I failed with others but uh, on the whole I think uh, me my team other colleagues in the Institute we did something really good we still work very hard in reality for example right now we have bought beds in the lab for the students so because every so often just two weeks ago I had to sleep in the lab too and then uh, we have two beds but we have decided that maybe we should bring more I was even making jokes with them that I would be a happy man if I could have my dormitory inside the in inside the lab I think uh, it's been very exciting doing research uh, here in China 
science is incredibly tough because uh, most of the time you're just working hard, suffering, and all sometimes, maybe one day every I don't know how many, you have something exciting in front of you to think about it, to interpret. I think the interesting thing is to look into, into what nobody has seen before, right? So be brave, be patient, and uh, try to learn from everyone, your colleagues, your teacher. And the most important thing is to never surrender. So in Spain, I was doing, I was a physician, immunologist, doing later during my PhD, cancer biology. In England, I also did cancer biology. My first contact with stem cells was here in China. I did not know anything about stem cells until I came to China. When I came to China, what I did is progressively try to adapt to this new field. And we were taking some directions. We were taking some directions. We want to understand what happens to cells when they become sick. Because a very simple view of disease, like many of you may have, is that if you have a problem in your brain, or you have a problem in your liver, or you have a problem in your heart, what happens to the cells is that those cells become sick, and one by one they start dying, die, 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 until your organ is just made of sick cells that have died, or that are preparing to die. But actually, disease is much more complicated than this. We believe that disease is somehow a change in cell identity because the body is made of many cells and those cells talk to each other that creates a balance and then when starts communicating with these cells in a different way in a complex way in a way that they cannot understand if the other cells get the wrong message they will do the wrong thing consequently things will start collapsing it will be like a domino effect and when everything starts going wrong is when you're sick and when you maybe don't have a solution so we work on this we work on this with stem cells in particularly with induced pluripotent stem cells like our young colleague said and with these cells we produce neurons we produce other cell types we combine them in two dimensions three dimensions we do lots of things and what we try to do is complex disease modeling, molecular medicine. And that makes me go back to my roots in medicine and can apply many of the concepts, my, many of the, much of the knowledge of the human body to what I do with cells. And we have a very big project on Parkinson's disease now, for example, and I think uh, the, uh, the discoveries that we have made are very exciting. So with all this, are we going to succeed? We have a good team, we are brave, we are young, some a little bit less than the others, but uh, we have determination, we work very hard. Are we going to succeed? The reality is that actually it doesn't matter. We have the chance to dream about something, the chance to dream about looking into what nobody else has looked before. And that is exciting. So I don't know whether we will succeed or we won't succeed. But what I can tell you is that we will try very hard and we will never surrender. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mika. Gracias.